Matthew Goodman, welcome to the Lowy Institute. You're here from the Centre for Strategic and International Studies in the US, here for a Think20 seminar, and we're delighted to have you. Thank you very much, Mike. Delighted to be here. One of the issues that's around at the moment is concern over the global economy. The opening of this week's Economist starts off by saying there's problems in the global economy. The G20, one of its objectives is to try and boost, promote global growth. There's a challenge. What do you think that we can achieve at this Brisbane summit that may make a positive contribution to global growth? Yes, well, thank you, Mike, for having me. Uh, it's great to be here at Lowy. Um, so yes, you're right. I think the global economy is in a rather uncertain phase here where growth in all the major economies is, is in some sense below par, uh, whether you look at uh, the United States, which is doing relatively better but still has uh, subpar growth. Uh, and some, some risks as well. Uh, Europe is, is flat and, and on the risk of um, going into deflation and recession. Uh, China is slowing down, still growing at sort of 7% plus, but uh, slower than it had been uh, with some big risks there in the financial system and the property sector. Um, and Japan, the other big economy, also uh, having some real doubt about uh, its, its growth uh, prospects. So I think this is a challenging time for the global economy. And, and the G20 was set up to deal with precisely these sorts of problems. Um, it was, of course, established in 2008 uh, as a leaders forum in crisis. Uh, we're not exactly in that kind of um, burning crisis, but it is uh, a real, uh, it's a slow burning um, uh, crisis of slow growth. And the G20 needs to do something to show that it can address this, uh, this growth uh, problem. And uh, Australia, I think, has set out some good objectives and, and ideas for doing that. Great. Yes, the world does need a little burst of confidence, a burst of optimism. And it does need to have some demonstration that countries are cooperating together. Because if we step back right now and look at it, we have problems with the WTO, the World Trade Organization, in that the uh, long fought agreement, the Bali Agreement, isn't going forward. It's been vetoed by a G20 member. We have geopolitical tensions and we have sanctions being imposed between G20 countries. And of course, we have the US not agreeing to the reform of the IMF, which has resulted in some alternative institutions, shall we say, being created in the region. Do you think we can get the burst of confidence, a demonstration that G20 countries are cooperating together at Brisbane? Well, it's very important to try to do that. I mean, that's what the G20 offers the opportunity to do because you have you know, leaders from about 85% of the world economy's um, weight uh, here in a room talking about all the issues you mentioned, and, and certainly uh, this is a huge opportunity. Uh, I think that the initial uh, confidence and the cooperation that was engendered in the early meetings of the G20 is going to be hard to reproduce because mm -hmm. there was a clear shared sense of crisis and common purpose. But uh, you know, you need to try to recreate that in a new way by showing that we can work together in, in specific, tangible ways to advance an agenda. And so I think the Australian growth strategy um, approach of setting a 2% uh, additional GDP target by 2018 um, is a good one to focus minds and the f reforms that are needed in individual countries. Uh, they're good proposals on uh, trade, on tax, on, on, uh, on energy, on other issues that the G20 can make some tangible progress and show that it, it's actually a, a useful forum to get some things done and to sort of set a direction for the global economy, which is what it does best. Yes, I think you're right. One of the advantages of having the 2% target has it certainly focused the mind. And it's also focused that we do need extra policies. Right. It's not business as usual. If you want more growth, you need to have more policies. That's of right. course, implementation is the challenge and that you can't solve the implementation issue at domestic summits. You've got to go home and do right. it domestically. Which raises the issue in the US and the problems that the US has in terms of implementing commitments at these international agreements. So that's always a, one of, I think, the uh, concerns that the rest of the world has in yep. terms of whether it will be delivered. Absolutely. And I think that you mentioned the IMF reform. Uh, that was something that actually, ironically, the United States championed at the 2010 uh, mm. summit. And then it, um, it was unable to deliver um, on, this, uh, on this commitment uh, because the U.S. Congress has not en enacted the relatively minor financial transfer. It's almost kind of an accounting uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 issue not really a substantial new uh, spend for the U.S., and yet Congress has not been willing to approve this. Um, and that's really undercut U.S. credibility and I think has made 
uh, overall global governance harder because while the United States cannot uh, run the world alone, it, it is indispensable to advancing progress on any of those issues that we talked about. And if the U.S. doesn't have the credibility uh, to come to the table on an issue like that, then um, I think it's, it's going to be very hard for the group as a whole to really achieve progress. So I certainly um, hope that the U.S. Will, will follow through and implement uh, its commitments, and I hope other countries will as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, sure. Matt. We all hope that everyone will implement their commitments and we'll have a successful summit. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks so much.